championship fight in the world of moto gp and i'm gonna let ivan uh explain about this one because he is very passionate about uh, someone named marquez 1043 days later mark marquez <laughs> is on top of the world at his home race uh, in front of all his fans oh it was crazy it was crazy <laughs> um you know extraordinary the, the riding, what he could do on that bike, the lean angle that he could do in certain corners, no other Ducati rider could do. It is certainly looking like it could be a Mark Marquez domination next year because when, when he's in that kind of mood and he's got that kind of feeling with the motorcycle, you can pretty much pack up and go home and fight for, for second. And I mean, a shocker from the world champion, uh, that I mean, it couldn't have gone any worse. I mean, no being on that the dirty start side was crazy yeah the dirty side you know wow. and, and there's every time wheel spinning but more worse than the guys who were six as well or ninth you know like he was the one that just got i don't know he don't almost know. fell off it was that bad twice mm. twice how oh, we didn't yeah. get collected you know like like lucky you know frankie Morbidelli wasn't anywhere near him you know? well, the, <laughs> well that was saying because of the the run to turn one was so short it, you know it's probably the best track to have the terrible start at mm. yeah you know yeah. versus i don't know a track like yeah uh, Catalonia in Spain. Mm. Oh, yeah. It would have been last. Yeah. It would have yeah. been yeah. last. No, so. no, no. You're right. You're right. But, but, but overall, it shows that, uh, you know, all the hard work, all the dedication, all the operations that he's been through. And, you yeah. know, this this coming from one of the, the craziest Valentino Rossi fans of all time, mm -hmm. myself, like, you still have to, you know, give it up for Marquez, you know, for all that he's been through eight times world champion he's got nothing to prove but yet still out there still pushing and he wanted you know to get back to that winning feeling That's and it. it's it's phenomenal it's phenomenal to watch him race you know and i think you know uh tracks like phillip island coming up and he should be good there malaysia yeah. and you know valencia you know he's really really started to come to terms with um this gp20 uh, or gp23 point one i guess you know little updates that have been provided to him but what do we think about the francesco baganaya crash oh my well. vote and of course it had to be another marquez as well well yeah, one no. marquez is on top dominating one marquez is literally on top of peco uh, yeah heading, yeah. Into, heading into the corner that was it was Ooh. dangerous um how yeah. we didn't get an injury yeah because he was pinned underneath he, Alex's he looks bike. stuck he was, and then the gravel came in and yeah. you know sorted them all out. But but Alex, yes. who's at fault? Uh, racing incident. <laughs> racing incident. It's nothing. Just an incident. Race. <laughs> nothing. Just an incident. Yeah. Right. Oh. No, I don't know. Like obviously, there's data that's come out apparently of Alex accelerating, kind of through Francesco, but I guess yeah, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> through. Pretty much. Literally, yeah. Alex, tried so to go yeah. straight through him, you know. But yeah, um, no, Daniel, I don't know. what do you think? Oh, okay. I ha I am moving towards more the racing incident. Um, <laughs> it's it's very it's very tricky. Um, sort it of was incident. awkward. But you are you more towards Alex's fault? Um, look, whenever you go for an, an around the outside move, you you need to you know be conscious of the consequences that to gamble. Um, you know. Eight times out of ten, it never it never comes through. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. in karting, you end up in the grass. Um, in car racing, you know, you end up making yeah, contact, and you know, usually either both of them spin, or, or or you know, at least something happens to the outside car. Nine times out of ten, in in this particular, I can understand what Francesco is saying. Francesco is saying that as MotoGP riders, they've got a hundred and eighty degree view, and so as Marquez is here and going through that corner there through here he would have seen some form of red or a helmet or something and at some point should have just gone like that instead of you know you're off camera doing that okay so, <laughs> so as marquez is doing he was, this he was trying he to demonstrate that corner 
what they're saying, what Francesco's point is saying is that through here, <laughs> he would have seen something like a helmet or a red bike or something. And, and why would you continue to accelerate if you're seeing shadows over here? Right. Right. And I'm not trying to lean towards Daniel. Well, you know, but no, I'm yeah, staying, I'm really staying over here. I'm staying so, in this Also, side. Ivan also forgot this was a radio show. Yeah, I was going to say. So, well, he was moving away from the mic. Not only can't you hear him, <laughs> but also uh, you it can't see very, him. It was very... Uh... <laughs> If you, you have to go to our YouTube demonstration, yeah, you have to go to our um, you have to go to our YouTube channel to watch that. That is uh, so well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it just disappears. Oh. Basically, basically what I'm saying. Okay, no, you're no, moving no. away. From what I'm, what he's saying is that Alex should have seen a red dot on his peripheral vision and got out of it. Exactly. I think there was a, <laughs> I think there was a split second Decision. as soon as he felt contact that the instinct should have been to. Break. break or let go of the accelerator at the very least. Yeah. And I think they both would have just made it or Francesco would have gone out wide and maybe onto the grass or something. But at the same time as well, I think Francesco, looking back at it, he saw an opportunity. He's a shark. He's super aggressive yeah. with his overtakes. And that's the risk that you are willing to take as a world champion to get that third place. I think he would have got the third place anyway because Marcus was starting to have tire degradation. And yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he would have done it anyway. So you don't become world champion without being aggressive. Yep. Uh, but also those points that he's now lost big time are going to hurt him big time. So because he's yeah. now 23 points behind Jorge Martin. And that's a lot of points now to, to catch up. He's used to catching up. Uh, we're kind of sick of watching him catch up points all the time in this, in these championships. It's a very that he topsy turvy uh, kind of, Championship fight. You know, one guy does really good one weekend. Well, this the, is the furthest does... gap we've seen in a long time. In, well, in that's a the point. Yeah. But I think also if Marcus continues this form, and if we see him win a sprint and a race again, and the top two keep tripping each other up and making mistakes, then seventy points can be potentially caught up. But I still think the GP twenty four is the best bike. I think there's going to be other rounds where you know. Peko and uh, Jorge are just going to be too strong that not even Marcus can keep up with them. But 2025, it's on. Oh, yeah. Right. It is on. Absolutely. And the fact, like I said before, the fact that it was a Marquez that crashed into Bagnaya yeah. just spices it up a little bit more. Yeah. Thurman Aldeguer has been confirmed for Grassini in mm. uh, 2025 as well yep. and 2026. And uh, um, Morbidelli will be a VR46 rider. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, he really needs to, you know, really step it up because otherwise that could be the end of Morbidelli's career, which is a shame because he is a vice champion, you know, in the past in the satellite team. But exciting, you know, like, I mean, the racing has been, you know, really, really, really good. And uh, this one was a bit boring, you know, because Mark just took off. And unbelievable how he just left them all behind. He just smashed them all weekend. Yeah. All it was from FP1. Domination. Yeah. Yeah, Eight tenths pole. of a second pole. Yeah, yeah. Sprint. It's a he, difference what happens if you start at the front. Did you? I don't know if you heard it on the commentary, but um, Aprilia, who had an absolute shocker of a yeah, weekend, yeah, yeah. Um, in an eleven-lap sprint, Marquez was fifty seconds in front of Maverick Vinales. Yeah, in eleven laps. Oh, that's sad. Crazy, yeah, hey? I'd I'd go with my race suit and go under a shower and make it like a really <laughs> cold shower and just play really sad music, you know? Hello, Hello white dark violin. My old yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know, I think also, you know, looking into the 2025 season as well, you know, KTM have a lot of work to do. Aprilia have a lot of work to do. Honda and Yamaha need to hire about another 7,000 people, you know, to try and catch up. But, you know, I think... Again, it's looking like uh, Peko and Marcus, of course, you know, they're going to be rivals for the title. Orge is going to find out that the bike uh, does make a difference. And, you know, there's, it's going to be very, very hard for him to challenge in his first year with Aprilia. Yeah. Although the Aprilia is a great package. And yeah, that, it's that, probably... That, mm, bike's, that bike's good. I reckon the KTM just outbeats him, though. Just. I think Pedro Costa with a year of experience and KTM being really driven to try and win a world title will be the, I think that will be the difference maker. Yeah, but also even Brad Binder's ahead of both Aprilia's. Yeah, they're just yeah. not being consistent. Yeah. And then that's why they're out, you know. That's why Vinales uh, um, is stepping all away from that seat and, you know, because Aprilia went and hired Jorge Martin because they believe Jorge Martin can win them a title, not Vinales. No, agreed. And I agree. Although it will... Kind of suck for Jorge if they have a 
another round at Aragon and he finishes last. That yeah, would suck. Yeah. yeah well, then that'll prove then it is the bike, not the rider. Yes. Badly. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. But uh, do you want to run through the race results? Sure thing. Uh, obviously, Mark Marquez was the victor. Uh, Jorge Martin second. Pedro Costa third. Oh, Brad. Before you go to Brad, how, good to see Acosta back at the yes. pointy end this time around. He's had a rough few rounds. It was tough for him um, to stay there, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, second or third lap, he was He held struggling. on, though. Yeah, it was yeah. held on, and um, that overtake from Jorge Martin on Pedro, and Pedro just not giving in. Mm. Uh, how he didn't fall off. They almost uh, no idea. Films, actually. I loved, yes. your, I loved your reaction on, on, on our Facebook chat yeah. that we were talking. You're like, I would never... Ever, ever ride a motorcycle? Yeah, yeah then, <laughs> I would absolutely love to watch it, but my god, I would instantly fall off nuts. as soon as I get out. Oh, <laughs> Just yeah, watch me playing 100%. the games, the MotoGP. I'd games. stall, I reckon. <laughs> um, yeah, Brad Binder was fourth, and A Bastini was fifth, Morbidelli seventh, uh, Di Antonio was seventh, Benseki eighth, Rins in the point in the top 10, unbelievable for Yamaha. Uh, Jack Miller also unbelievable in the top ten. Unbelievable for Miller. That didn't, that didn't, that that didn't fall off. What happened to Quartararo? Did he crash? Yes. Yes. Oh, he crashed lap two, I think. Lap three. Ouch. Uh, Alicia Spargo. In the sprint, he was good. Yes. Mm. Yeah, he was very. Uh, Alicia Spargo was eleventh. Taka Nakagami was twelfth. Uh, Fernandez, Augusto Fernandez, thirteenth. Uh, Johan Zarco, fourteenth. And Joan Mir rounding up the points. Uh, we'll continue down. Repsol Honda got a point, unbelievable. Uh, Raul Fernandez, 16th, Luca Marini, uh, 17th. He was 112 seconds behind. Jeez. That's yeah. a long way. He literally did how many laps was it? 26, 7? Yeah, by himself because he, I think, he had a stall on the line. Oh, right, and okay. then never saw anyone ever again. Wow, uh, and then not, cla- <laughs> <laughs> not classified was Benyaya Marquez, Alex Marquez, Maverick Vinales, and Hotararo. And Oliveira. Yeah, Oliveira, lap one crash. They hurt. They yeah. hurt because he had. He seemed all right, actually. And, you know, they, he was performing better. He was only Patrick. a brilliant than 10. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 100%, so, so. Um, no, look, very, very fascinating. A great race. Uh, we're looking forward to to the next round uh, for, for MotoGP. Which is San Marino as well, by the way, Ooh, too. They're doing a... My favorite track. From, a double. Yeah, double. So yeah. That'll be really, really? interesting. Mm. Yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah, one of the riders, because uh, Alex Renz and uh, Quattararo, under the rules, have been allowed to do more testing there, so have okay. Repsol Honda. And Alex Renz actually said, by the time we finish the final Grand Prix there, I will literally be able to ride blind. <laughs> That's how many <laughs> laps they've done. Is it? Are they doing two rounds there to replace the was it Kazakhstan GP they got? Yeah. Can? Okay. Yeah. Again. Again. Yeah, they're probably never going to race there. Just like F1 never raced in Vietnam. <laughs>